Why Ashley flattens her boobies, take one. everyone, my name is Ash, and I wear a binder. Since a lot of you seem to have questions on the matter, I'ma talk about it. I am genderqueer. And fun fact, binders can be worn by many types of people of various genders. Also people without gender. Binary trans people can wear binders, non-binary people can wear binders, gender fluid people can wear binders, gender indifferent people can wear binders, agender people can wear binders. Are you catching on? Lots of people wear binders and lots of people don't. I only mention that because it's important to note that not everyone who falls under the trans umbrella will want to bind. Some people might not want to. That's okay. Some cis people even bind. I did before I came out, or even knew I wasn't cis. Binding is a very personal thing, and there is a copious amount of reasons a person might choose to bind. As far as who should do it goes, I think anyone. Anyone who finds that binding makes them more comfy in their presentation and comfy in themselves should go for it. As you know, I'm all about diverse perspectives, so I have a special guest who has a different gender and lived experience from my own, and we are both going to talk about the topic of binding together. Introduce yourself, Good sir. Uh, my name is Nick. My gender is FTM, female to male, transgender. My pronouns are he, him, and his. Thank you, friend. Now, I realize we haven't explicitly defined binding yet. Binding is the use of a garment to safely compress one's chest in order to achieve a flatter appearance. So let's get into it. How long have you been binding? I have been binding for, let's see, I think it was January of this year, maybe like last year. December. I don't know why I put it off so long. I had been transitioning for maybe four months before I got my binder. Um, I don't know. It just kind of scared me to take that step, but I'm really glad I did take that step. I've been binding for three years on and off, but within the last few months, I've been doing it quite frequently. Whenever I can, really. I do it so often now that on days I don't bind, it feels strange. I bind because I have chest dysphoria. You can watch this video to learn more about that if you like. I feel most confident and comfortable and myself when I have a flatter chest. That's just how I feel like I'm supposed to look. Flat. And for those of you who want to see the difference binding makes, this is me in a sports bra, and this is me in a binder. See? Much flatter. Now what kind or brand of binder do you like best? The brand I use is GC2B. They have pretty good binders. I like them because, I mean, they're the only ones I've tried, so I can't really say too much about that, but they bind really well. They're really, really comfortable. The only things I'd say about these are that, like, the neck is really close, so I can't really wear too many shirts with, like, a bigger collar, which is pretty disappointing, but I don't know, I might be trying other binders soon and see how those work out. And also there's full-length ones, which basically, it goes down to your hip, and half-length ones, um, I prefer the most because, I don't know, these, these ones kind of roll up a little bit. I own one GC2B binder and one Underworks binder. They were both around 30, maybe $40 with shipping, and GC2B and Underworks are arguably the most popular binder brands out there. I bought one of each to see if I had a preference. I don't really. They seem the same to me <laughs> and work the same. I know that some people feel really strongly and a lot of people do have a preference, so if you do, Leave your preference in the comments below and talk about why you like one brand over the other. I just think they're kind of the same on my body, personally, so I like them both. And I also own this shitty binder. It was the first one I ever bought. It was a whopping $6 on eBay, and I purchased it without doing any research or knowing anything on safe slash effective binding. Not only did it break after just a few months, but it also gave me a lot of cute back and rib pain, so I regret that much, Lee. Please learn from my mistakes and invest in a safe and well-fitting binder. It's important and worth it. It is worth the money. And finally, what do people need to know if they're thinking about binding or if they are already binding? What are some tips and tricks you can offer? For safety, I'd say don't keep your binder on for more than eight hours. It could cause like pain. It could have serious damage to your ribs. Like I said, get a professional binder. Cheap binders and homemade binders can be really uncomfortable and really dangerous. You don't want to damage your body. Mm -mm. Dysphoria is shitty, but a broken you 
is worse. Be really careful about how long you have it on. Never sleep in it. That is really, really bad, especially I know some people who have like breathing problems. Um, and if you sleep with it on, you're, <laughs> you're gonna have some problems because it sends it's restricting your chest and you, when you sleep, you like breathe um, involuntary. So when you can't control your breathing, you will have a really hard time there. I really do not recommend sleeping with a binder. Start slow. Try short periods of time to break in your binder and get used to the sensation. And then you can work your way into longer periods of wear. Get the right size. Don't order a smaller size than you should because you want a really flat chest. The correct size for you will be flat enough and it's not safe to go smaller than recommended. Plus, you'll just never be able to get it on. It is important to bind safely because one, um, if you plan on getting top surgery um, later on in your transition, it I forget what exactly it does. I know the outcome is different when um, you had bind, binded for a lot or like bind it on safely. I, I forget what it's called, but I know it definitely does uh, affect the way your top surgery comes out. New binders are hard to get on. So if that's the case for you, don't panic. Take your time. It might require a few attempts. That's okay. But never try putting it on straight out of the shower. If any part of you is wet or sticky, it'll be even harder. Now this might not work for you, but just in case it does, this is how I put on my binder. I put it inside out and upside down and I step into it. Then with a lot of might, I finagle it over my hips. And that might be really hard, especially if the binder's new, but after that point, it's cake. It's easy. You're gold after that. Then I grab onto the shoulder straps like handles and I pull up over my boobies and put my arms in and voila! Now this is an important one. Most people are not going to be completely flat. That's just how it is. If you try to achieve a absolutely 100% flat look, you could hurt yourself and you'll probably be disappointed. Dysphoria is shitty, I know, but it's easier and safer to accept some slight bumps. Plus, a ton of cis guys don't even have totally flat chests. It might help to think of your binded boobies as pecs or muscle. You're buff now. And alas, we have run out of time, but there are many more binding tips and tricks out there. If you know one, feel free to leave it in the comments. Also, check out my special guest, and I'll see you next week. Okay, bye. Hi guys, no end screen this time. <clears throat> I just have an important request for you. My request is that you go follow me on Instagram. I changed my Instagram to ins blah, blah, blah. I changed my Instagram name to Ash Hardell. And there's lots of exciting pictures. Pictures and photos of a certain event, a certain happening that has to do with the name change. So if you want to go see those pictures and photos of that glorious event, go follow me on Instagram at Ash Hardell. Okay, bye!